And welcome back to Super Sons. This episode is actually a very special episode. I'm going to be calling it our annual because Jake and I aren't really in the episode for the recording bits. Mike's actually taking care of most of this episode, so you'll be hearing a lot more of his voice than normal. Recently, all three of us were press for Keystone Comic Con in Philly. What that means is that we got to go to the convention for free, and people thought we were legit, so they let us interview them. So we did a bunch of interviews with some creators. We also did some cosplayers and some just regular old fans because I just wanted to see what fans themselves think about positivity and things like that in the comic industry and things that draw them to DC Comics. So without further ado, Mike, take it away. Well, this is new. Uh, It's not typical that I get to talk to you guys uh, as a regular host. I'm usually providing some random voiceover that Dan assigns to me or adding in some snarky line uh, because I'm just impatient to start my own podcast that maybe Dan and I will get off the ground one day. It's okay. It'll come eventually. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Today, we're here to talk about Keystone Comic Con in Philadelphia, an event which could not have been put on without an awesome event organization team. So our first interview is from somebody who might know a little bit about that. I'm MK Goodwin. I am the event director at Repop. So um, thank you for letting us interview you. I have a couple questions. Normally we send this to people before just so they can prep themselves because it's it's a doozy. Um, what's your favorite sandwich? <laughs> I love it. Okay, so I have to say, oh, man, it's it's hard. Because I love sandwiches so much, I feel like I'd be remiss to mention just one type of sandwich, right? And then, and then there's the whole debate between, like, is a hot dog really a sandwich? You know, so there's – I feel like there's a lot behind this one. <laughs> there's a lot behind this question. Um, but I think – you know what? I, I really just love a spicy chicken sandwich. Okay. I, I think All I right. think that's my front runner. Yeah. Like a spicy as in a buffalo chicken sandwich or just like a spicy chicken sandwich? Yeah, I think a spicy buffalo. I like a little heat with my chicken. All right. All right. So, mm-hmm. good answer. And you brought up the hot dog debate. <laughs> um, we've kind of been afraid of that one. Um, yeah. none, none of the other people I, we've interviewed yet. It's very polarizing. Yet. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> you had to bring it. That's a hot topic. People get really inflamed about it, and I'm like, guys, guys, like, I mean, everyone's got a different point of view. We just all need to get along here. Yeah, it's a it's a heavy hitter. Um, <laughs> so, second question, what does your position entail? Um, I know you and I just spoke about what you do a little bit, but mm-hmm. um, if you could explain it to me like I'm five, just so everyone can fully understand <laughs> what you do. Sure. Um, Okay, so what I do is I oversee half of our domestic comic portfolio. So for the shows that I oversee, which is Keystone Comic Con and Emerald City Comic Con, um, and also Anime Fest at New York Comic Con, is I oversee sales, marketing, content conference panels, um, PR, press, operations for all of those shows. And I have a team underneath me, an amazing, amazing team um, that makes all of that stuff happen. So um, that's kind of what I do up until the show. And then at the show, my my position really shifts to kind of managing the fan experience, making sure everyone's having a really, really great time, uh, getting everything they need, finding what they need to find, and just really enjoying their time with us. Nice. So how did you end up getting into the industry? Um, So I kind of fell into it accidentally. I um, graduated college around the time of the recession back in uh, 07 and 08, and it was really difficult to get a job. And what I originally wanted to do, like, I know I was hiring for anything, right? So mm-hmm. I uh, found camp work at Read Exhibitions, which is uh, the largest trade show organizer in the world. Um, and I was working on B2B events for a while. So I was working on our golf show and our hardware show, jewelry show, um, just uh, stuff that's, you know, exciting, but just in terms of what I had always loved growing up, it was a little bland and not related. Um, but I um, was <laughs> chosen to work near your Comic Con one year because that show was basically all in London. And um, I was like, what is this? This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen or been a part of. I don't know what this is, but I know I need to be a part of this for the rest of my life. Um, so I spent the following years just trying to really endear myself to the Repop team and 
um, helps them out, and um, they eventually hired me on to be a content coordinator um, for C2E Junior Comic Con, which kind of, that's just kind of how I got into it, but I had never known, it was just interesting, I had never known that there were places for people like that, and I had loved things uh, like anime, um, loved superhero star storylines, things like that, but stuff that people didn't really understand or enjoy, and it was a very lonely Christmas tree for a while, and then now it's just, it's, I feel like it's come full circle, and just, I, I enjoy myself and I like so much because I get to actually connect to these people who I think formerly have been largely marginalized for their interests. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, we used to go to um, New York. So I went to college in North Jersey. Um, so we used to go to Comic-Con in New York every year. And it started and it was like a lot less crowded. And then as years passed, like more and more people were there. And it was like, wow, this mm-hmm. is um, this is the future. Like things like this are happening. Yeah. No, it's really awesome. So uh, what would be your favorite thing that has happened to you or a memory from a convention? I would say... Maybe it's not one thing, but it's it's uh, something that keeps happening over and over again. And it's the fact that people find our shows so special and such a standout event that they often propose um, at our shows. You know, you have you have a guy or a girl getting down on one knee and popping a question to their intended, and it's just something really, really awesome because that only happens in very special places. People make those choices very deliberately. And to know that it has such a special place in people's hearts that they're just like, I want to ask this person to spend the rest of their life with me at this place is something that's really special. And then actually at Keystone Comic Con last year, some, someone actually got married at the show. Um, so that kind of stuff always gets me and it's really, really cool. And just It's kind of like a reality check. I feel like, yeah, this is, this is special. This is awesome. Wow. I was not expecting that answer. That's incredible. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I was going to ask you what appeals most about conventions to you, but I, I feel like um, you kind of described that with how you think it's such a special place. Yeah, no, that's definitely that's definitely it. It's, it's funny because people are like, oh, what's your favorite part of con? And I think they're usually referring to, like, do you like to shop with exhibitors or do you like to attend panels or do you like to get a celebrity autograph or something like that? But my favorite part is really just – watching the fans love what they love. I love watching cosplay because that means someone feels so connected to a particular character and loves them so much they'll spend on the costume. Or I love watching people just go wild overseeing the stage celebrity. Um, we have big main stage panels and you know a, a TV or movie star walks out on stage. I don't actually watch them walk out. I turn and I look at the audience because uh, the reactions are just so amazing and awesome. I really make the, the long nights and, and for working weekends and just the hard work really, really worth it. That's awesome. Like something we're really big on is like sharing passion and like getting to see that. So that answers, that's um, such a cool thing that you don't really think about as a fan going into these types of events. Um, so I think I'll be a little bit more aware of that this weekend, like watching mm-hmm. people's faces just because yeah. watching someone love something that they really love is something I love too. It is. And it's so, it's not really that commonplace because when you're out and about in the world, like unless you're looking at me at a sandwich shop, you don't really see people's faces <laughs> light up a lot, you know? So I, it's just something that I love. And when it, when that happens, I try to take full advantage of it. Um, so you were talking about the celebrities. Have you ever been starstruck over like one of the creators or a celebrity you've bumped into while working? Yeah. So I have this weird, you know, I'll just say it. Uh, I have this weird crush on Kermit the Frog. And uh, <laughs> last year, at Pizza Comic Con, they actually brought in the puppeteer of Kermit the Frog. Now, I don't really like to think of Kermit as a puppet. I like to think of Kermit as Kermit. Uh, but that for me was kind of like a fan out moment. And I'm like, oh, I got to meet this guy. I got to get in there, like, whatever. But then I was like, no, like, I don't know. Like, because that's not actually Kermit. But that was something that was really, really exciting for me. It was just really something that has been with me my entire life in the show and have other people there that are as excited as I am to see it. Um, that is an awesome answer. I might, I might cut out my <laughs> part here. Um, so <laughs> recently I'm sitting at work and I was dealing with this customer and I was like, I'm just going to start talking in my Kermit the Frog voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and my, my coworkers stopped me before I did it, but now I do it at home and it, it annoys, um, the hell out of my dog and my oh. girlfriend. 
because I'll just be sitting there and be like, hi, right, Kermit the Frog here. And oh, my God, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> she will get so angry at me because I will not stop. No, um, see, that would be so, like, I feel like that is just so important to a relationship, you know, and now I know what's missing from my relationship with my husband is that. So thank you for uncovering that for me. Yeah, yeah let him know you need to figure that out. Um, yeah, we do a lot of... Um, we do like these cold opens for the show where we do a lot of voice acting and things like that. And I realized, I was like, Oh wait, I'm kind of good at this. So I've been doing Kermit the frog a lot. That's so cool. Um, and so, uh, favorite, what is your favorite cosplay you've seen so far in your, um, this one's really, really hard for me because there are so many good ones out there. Like I just, I, 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 you, like my jaw usually drops a few times at a show just because of what we what we see. Um, one of my favorite things to do is go to our Saturday evening cosplay competition. Mm-hmm. We have one at every one of our domestic shows, um, and it really showcases uh, the best and brightest of the cosplay community. It's it's a fully produced event, so all the participants are chosen ahead of time and pre-selected to be the best of the best. And um, it's just a, a couple hours where we have judges and they all come out and they showcase, you know, all the time that they spent on this. Um, and, and they, we talk about the work hours that have gone into it. And it's really great because it's not even just highlighting the local community, but also every year, um, the winners of each competition gets to go to Chicago the following year to participate on a global level, um, for cosplay competitions. So the winner of our, um, Paris competition of our show in Paris and um, the winner of our London competition and the winner of our competition in Korea or Australia, they all go to Chicago the following year. And it's just this like amazing cosplay love fest. And it, it really is the best of the best, not only in the United States, but in the world. Wow. So it's, it's kind of like the Super Bowl of cosplay. Yeah, pretty much. But, you know, there's not really nothing about sports, so I missed yeah. that as well, so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not very, not very in depth with those things either. Um, so this one, this one's off my cuff. Um, who's the costume you see the most of? Like what character? You know, it really varies, and it's so interesting because the trends are very different. I would say a couple years ago, we would have like we'd be like, all right, everyone likes drink every time you see a Harley Quinn, right? <laughs> um, or um, I thought what was amazing was uh, when Black Panther came out. The amount of T'Challa's that I saw, it was just, it was it was really awesome how much that movie affected people and how everyone got behind it and the inclusivity behind it. And the, I mean, the amount of black Panthers we had out there, I, it wasn't like, Oh, another black Panther. It's like, yes, another one. Like it was, <laughs> it was really, really awesome. So it, it really does change from time to time. I imagine for Keystone coming up, we're going to have a million Spider-Man. Uh, Cause Tom oh, yeah. coming, right. So yeah. that just makes perfect sense. And I'll be so happy to see them because I'm so happy that Tom Holland's coming. So. Yeah, that's kind of um, a huge a huge win. Like that is a the biggest superhero right now. Yeah, um, we're really excited that he's coming. I I personally am excited. Like like I said, I don't get Star Trek to walk unless it involves some sort of like you know felt frog or whatever. But um, you know, Avengers was awesome, and so many people went on an emotional journey um, with those movies. And Far From Home just really like hit me emotionally. And usually, my husband's like. You're kind of made of stone. Are you not like a goat at all? But uh, that one, that one got me. I kind of felt that, like actually the hardest thing I had for some of all of that would be like it was really, really awesome, and I, I can't wait to, to see my show. Yeah, I am. Um... I think Far From Home was so important to me because I'm a huge Mysterio fan. Um, and now That's everyone awesome. knows who Mysterio is. Um, yeah, well, now before that was like your guy, right? Were you yeah. <laughs> and one year at um, New York, we're coming out of a panel and Shocker and Clock King are standing next to each other. And I looked at my brother and I was like, Jake, this is um, this is the greatest moment of my life. That's so awesome. But I love, just, you know, you weren't even expecting that though, right? You oh, came out never. of the panel room, not even going into a panel room. You came out and you were just like, oh, I'm just going to go get a hot dog. Could be a sandwich. Maybe not. I don't know. But <laughs> you, you had a moment right there. Like you never know when those moments are going to happen for you at a Comic-Con. Like sure, when you go to a panel or get an autograph, but those moments are always like right around the corner. And it's the coolest yeah. thing. Yeah. And like, it's, it's the fact that like other people, are into the same thing as you. Like they're into that one weird Spider-Man villain that no one wants to like see. Yeah, and when and, you meet that person, you're best friends immediately. It's oh awesome. yeah. Cause you know, you're, you're in the same circle. Yeah. Um, okay. So tips for first time con goers. What's your, like your, your rules. Okay. Um, I would say, 
First of all, you, you have to plan. This isn't really an event that you want to do just kind of off the cuff or show up and be like, all right, what's what's there to do? There's really so much to do that it's not great to just show up without any sort of planning. So you want to prepare um, or else you won't be able to do everything you want to do or you'll miss something that you wanted to do. So you want to look at the events happening ahead of time, you know, what you want to do and you want to plan around those things. The best way to do that is to download our mobile app. Um, it has the most up-to-date information and when you're on site at the show, every single um, element of information that you need about the show, um, including any recent changes, is going to be right in the palm of your hand, which is awesome. So updating information from that. Um, and then you definitely want to have your camera ready because like you said, there's so many things that just happen and there's so many things to do and see. Um, there's a lot of moments that you want to capture that you'll want to be able to look back on and you'll want to go on social media and share with your friends because it's just that awesome. So, oh, and also constant in my life, bring snacks uh, because, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so we've got two more questions. One, because sure. we're a DC Comics podcast, who's your mm -hmm. favorite DC character and a little bit on the why? Oh, um, you know, it's really hard for me um, for DC because I am more of a more professional. I'm so sorry for that. But hey, I, it's have fine. To say, I have to say that um, Wonder Woman really, really renewed my faith in movies. And it just really, as far as, as far as superhero movies go, there's not a lot for women to pick from. And I have two daughters, and to know they have this kind of content out there now that they can go to and, and see and see themselves as means the world to me and means the world to me for them. So, and I'm really, really excited that that seems to be the way the industry is trending, um, just because it's really great that these movies and these characters and these comic books are starting to really reflect the world um, that they live in and the readers that they have. Yeah, and as I said to you earlier, we're really big on that kind of stuff because everyone needs a hero and being able yeah. to see these movies and um, different people getting the heroes they deserve is incredible. Yeah, anyway, like I did feel like I finally had a hero that I yeah. like, wow. like it just, you know, it just the, the feeling that you can get from that sort of thing, there's, there's really nothing like it. Yeah. I um I've always been a huge Aquaman fan, so when I saw that in theaters this year, it was a uh, pretty emotional for me. Um, That's awesome. So, my final question: Is there something something positive you'd like to see more of in the comic industry and the comic world or the convention world? Something that you enjoy and you want to see more of? I love it when people just connect with each other. And I know it can be hard for certain people, including myself, just because um, I spent just a lot of myself more being inward rather than outward because I've been judged on what I've liked and how it just wasn't uh, cool enough or wasn't acceptable enough. So people connecting more at these shows, um, people developing relationships, um, people getting engaged, people getting married because they're coming together at this event. All I encourage people really to do at the show besides plan your event is to turn to the person next to you in line or turn to the person next to you on the show floor and just say, hey, what's up? Where are you here to see? You really could find your new best friend. It's, it's, it's that awesome. And everyone who comes to the show is, is so cool. And I really love watching those types of connections happen and, and being those types of connections. I mean, just look at you and me right here. Like, we are <laughs> deeply connected because of your current voice now. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'll um, <clears throat> we'll have to run into each other so I can um, we can uh, annoy my girlfriend with it. Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> so, um, thank you for your time today. Um, no problem. I'm very excited for this weekend. Awesome. And with that, Comic Con began. Before we go into these interviews, I do want to give everybody a little bit of a heads up. Some of the audio here can be a little bit rough. This was our first time doing this with decent microphones, but a loud, noisy environment like Comic-Con nonetheless. So we did our best. We'll try to do better next time. It's always a learning experience here on Super Sons. And without further ado, let's get right to these interviews. The first one, you'll hear from a couple cosplayers dressed as Flash and the Reverse Flash. All right, so our first question is always the hardest hitting. Um, we've asked all of the creators, artists, and all the people we've worked with this one, and it usually stumps people. Um, what's your favorite sandwich? Ooh, okay. Um, quick, uh, hot or cold? Penny, it's, okay. it's up to you. Chicken parm, hands down. Okay. I will never what's not be in the parm? mood. I will never not be in the mood for a chicken parm sandwich. 
I gotta rep Philly and say cheesesteak. All right. But I do it slightly different. I put pepperoni on mine. Pepperoni on it? Yeah. And I do that because my... Actually sounds awesome. Uh, my university's cafeteria made them really bad, and I needed some extra flavor <laughs> on it. <laughs> so, question two. You're dressed as the refers Flash and Flash. Um, why? Why did you choose those characters? Uh, so I have a lifelong dream to have every superhero costume in my closet at one point. But uh, to start with, you got to start somewhere. And I have a Spider-Man, and I have a Star-Lord, and I saw... I love the CW shows, and when the season four suit of Flash came out, I said, okay, I can't not anymore. I need to have it. I chose mine so we could match. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good reason. And then for the third question, is there anything positive in the comic community that you want to see more of? Uh, that's not really my wheelhouse. Go ahead. <laughs> I got you. I would say the most positive thing in the comic community is when... So someone like me who grew up with it and you know knows a, a good chunk of it, if somebody that doesn't and they ask questions, I will always, always rather explain and take time to make because you know it gets complicated i don't like to see when people get all high and mighty about someone not knowing because then no one's gonna know and eventually it goes away so i would say the most positive thing i can see is when people are happy to explain they recommend like okay to get started on this character this is my favorite story of them or this is like a good source to find it yeah most of my knowledge is either TV or Arrowverse shows or, you know, DC animated stuff, which is mostly through this guy, and so I'm the one that has all those dumb questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Of course. Happy to be here. Our next interview comes from an opportunity we had to speak with comics artist Dennis Cowan. Uh, you'll probably start noticing a running theme with the questions in these interviews, and uh, I just got to say it's, it's pretty fun to hear all the different responses that everybody has, and uh, Dennis in particular got me laughing pretty hard on a couple of them, so you'll probably hear my obnoxious laugh in the background for those. But anyway, here we go. All right, we are here with Dennis Cowan. Uh, our first question is a normal question we ask people. What's your favorite sandwich? My favorite sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> Does ham Do hamburgers count? Yeah, man. What's your favorite hamburger? Cheeseburger. Then? All right, all right. Uh, what's your favorite DC property you've worked on? It'll probably be the question. Feel probably that. the question. Um, and what's a positive th change you'd like to see in comics? Or something positive that you've seen in comics recently that you'd like to see more of? Something positive in comics that I would like to see? Mm -hmm. Does that have to be creative or it could be no, anything? it could be anything. Union. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That works. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So seeing as this is the quote-unquote Mike Annual, as Dan put it, which I will be titling this issue, I gotta say, I had a lot of crazy ideas for this one, and things I wanted to do, and maybe, I don't know, make it a little weird, I don't know, you could do whatever, it's our podcast, but I'm recording all this the night of release, so probably should just hold on to that for next year, and I'll plan better, mm, that's a good idea. And then, yeah, maybe next weird, next weird, there you go. Maybe next year we'll get weird. This next interview is from a cosplayer who goes by the name Clockwork Angel. What's your name? I don't need my costume or me. Both. Both? Uh, I'm Clockwork Angel. I'm cosplaying the Riddler, female Riddler. All right. Um, so our first question, a little hard. What's your favorite sandwich? Favorite sandwich? I like buffalo chicken on anything, so buffalo well, chicken sandwich. Alrighty then. Uh, what is your favorite DC Comics property and why? Property? Yeah. The character. Character, you know. Um, comic book, when they actually do comic book, Harley Quinn. Not the new versions of her where they make her too sleazy. She's All so right. smart and intelligent and I love her. But then Riddler and Joker. Yeah. Okay. What's <laughs> something in comics that you've seen that's positive that you want to see more of? Uh, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> something positive in fandom and things like that that you like seeing. You know, like diversity. It brings things. people together. <laughs> all right, that works. That <laughs> that's works. all I've got. <laughs> Here's another fun fact about me that I don't know if all the listeners are aware of. I'm not that much of a comic book geek. Uh, yeah, gotta admit it. 
Um, but that's what this whole podcast is about, right? Getting people into it who weren't previously into it. Uh, I read Watchmen in college because I had an awesome English 102 professor that had us read Watchmen. Um, and then, I mean, among other things like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. But the point being, I just want to give a shout out to all the awesome, positive people I met, especially at the DC cosplay meetup that they had at the con this year. Um, as somebody who's still getting into comics, it's awesome to not have to deal with a bunch of gatekeepers and get to talk to positive people that make me excited to check out these characters and these stories and learn so much more about the process of making comics. So not sure what really I'm trying to get out there, just trying to give back the positivity that I felt like I got at Comic-Con. Our next interview is from colorist Chris Sotomayor. All right, uh, so this, this, this first one's a little tough. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite sandwich? My favorite sandwich? Yeah. I, li- I like a meatball hero, a good meatball hero. <laughs> all right, all right. So what's your favorite DC property you've worked on? Nightwing, hands down Nightwing. All right, yeah. all right. Um, what's a positive thing you've seen in comics recently that you'd like to see more of? Ooh, um, I, I like... I like the idea of a lot of different publishers springing up, and I hope that they can stay healthy because it just grows the market. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also like, and, and I've talked about this with a few people, you know, in a small circle about uh, mentorship. Um, I came up uh, through a mentorship program. I was in a studio um, that uh, it's actually a result of meeting Dennis Cowan, one of the Milestone yeah. founders. His answer to that, this question was uh, unions. Unions. Unions yeah. would be good. I got to tell you. Uh, I'm not going to start rabble rousing yet. No. But, uh, <laughs> he was our first of the day. <laughs> nice. Uh, I, I got to say, I, I would like to see more mentorship in the business because I think that's how you cultivate a stronger industry um, through mentorship, through sharing knowledge and experience. I came up through a studio that had uh, John Paul Leon, Bernard Chang, Sean Martinborough, myself, Dennis Calero. You know, and we all got a lot out of that that particular experience, um, and and a bunch of other people came through there too, um, and we we were able to learn and hone our craft working on projects, which was nice, and being yelled at, and uh, you know having stuff thrown at us, and also being told we did a good job, and you know getting into shows and stuff, and seeing what it took to pound the pavement and get some work. So it did a lot to prepare us for working in, in the industry. Mm-hmm. So now unions, <laughs> I would love to see it. I, got, I can't lie. It'd be nice to have some standards. I see a lot of people getting taken advantage of, and that is really my least favorite thing. Mm. Well, thank, well, thank you. you. I'm excited my to pleasure. interview you fully later. Awesome. Here's another cosplay interview for you. We got to speak with a Harley Quinn named Kaylin. Well, uh, our first question is a little hard. Uh, what is your favorite sandwich? Ooh. Hmm. Well, definitely, well, I don't call them sandwiches. They're hoagies here. So All right. <laughs> I get a hoagie, ham, cheese, mayo, lettuce, pickles, a little bit of oregano. Oh, the All whole right. recipe. All right. All right. So, what is your favorite DC property and why? Ooh. So, Batman, hands down, only because I'm a huge Harley Quinn fan. So prior to when she got really popular in uh, Suicide Squad, I liked her for her old school comics in the like early, well, late 90s when they dropped. I loved her comic book series. So. Okay. What is something in comics that you've seen that's positive that you want to see more of? Okay. So the good thing about comic books is it helps with um, reading comprehension. And a lot of people don't understand that when you start reading comic books young, it helps kids that um, don't speak like English as their first language to get better with English as their second language. So I feel as though if you start comics at a young age, it's so much better for reading comprehension, but no one ever thinks about that. All right. Thank you. All right. Trying to keep things moving along here trying to keep you guys entertained next up we have comic book author amy chu the first question is a really hard hitter oh no what is your favorite sandwich uh you mean here in philly or in general i I feel like since i'm in philadelphia i have to say it's that 
roast pork with rabe sandwich from Tony Liz. Oh, okay. So you didn't go with the cheesesteak? No. Good. All right, number two. What is your favorite DC Comics property you've worked on so far? Oh, well, I mean, Poison Ivy, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And the third question, what is a positive thing you've seen in the comics industry that you'd like to see more of? <laughs> Interesting. Or in general? In general, no, you know, um, it's actually, uh, for the most part, quite a supportive industry. So I'm, I'm laughing because there's so many really small things that have made a huge difference in my career um, that it's actually kind of hard to pull out. I mean, a, a good example is like, you know, people go on about how Twitter is such a cesspool. At the same time, a lot of the different creators have tweeted me out in a really positive way. Like, Gail Simone does that all the time. Makes a huge difference. Uh, anytime I have a new book coming out, she'll tweet it out. I swear, I get like 50 new followers just because of that. So I wish more people would do that. I try to do my part as well, but, you know, that's kind of like the positive thing I see going on. Well, thank you. Sure. Still have a couple more interviews coming up, but the last cosplay interview we had was from a Red Hood named Puchisaru. So our first question is always like our hardest hitting. We usually catch people off guard. What is your favorite sandwich? What is my favorite sandwich? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm saying ham and cheese sandwich. All right. All right. Second question. Why did you dress as a red hood? Why did I dress as red hood? Uh, Well... Me, me cosplaying as Red Hood today, um, just, you know, I love the character, I love what he stands for, and the fact that Jason Todd is the only Robin to actually call Batman out on his, you know, shenanigans, uh, it makes me love Red Hood even more. Batman's bullshit. Um, so, third question is, what is something positive that you see in the nerd or comic world that you'd like to see more of? Uh, the camaraderie, honestly. Like, a lot of people just are, in this day and age, a lot of people are coming together, and you just... I'm trying to trying to get the words. Mm-hmm. They're just coming together and, you know, just a lot of positivity. And the fact that, like, a few years ago, if you were a nerd or, you know, you liked anything outside of the norm um, in high school or anything like that, you were bullied. Nowadays, that is the norm. And as, as great as that is, I, I want more of it. You know, just having kids and, you know, teens just grow up on it and just push out the positivity that the comic books are trying to, you know, bring out into the world. Thank you. And our final interview was from Thomas Delphi, executive director at Nerd Tino Entertainment Studios. Thomas was an awesome, incredible, hilarious last interview to have. I hope you guys enjoy it. So, could you tell us your name and the name of your organization? Hi, my name is Thomas Delphi. I am the executive director of the Nertino Expo, the first East Coast Latinx comic book convention, uh, promoting the history and presence of Latin Americans in geek culture right out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Nice. So, we just have a couple questions for you. The first one usually hits the hardest. What is your favorite sandwich? Oh, man. I was not expecting this kind of hard-hitting journalism this early on. Yeah. Hmm. A chicken parm from either Cleaver's off of 18th Street yeah. or from Venice, Venice Pizza in Malvern. Okay, all right. Or all right. a Philly cheesesteak from Philly cheesesteaks in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> because, like, the cheese is actually injected into the meat. It coats everything. And you get a big plate of fries all for $10. 12 with a bottle of Coke. Well, you got to go with the deal. Yeah. Uh, So our second question, what is your favorite DC Comics property? Uh, Or character. uh, Oh, my God. Why you got to make this so hard? That's Um, what we're here for. So, I mean, I, I live for a good bit of DC. One of my favorite characters is Black Mask. Just because aesthetically, he's so interesting. But story-wise, he's been very mistreated by DC, I feel. He had that one good arc with Gotham War where um, he was, uh, you know, he killed Stephanie Brown. He became the boss of Gotham and then Red Hood. But it's like there isn't a lot more cool things that have been done with him other than some weird cult stuff with Jeremiah Arkham. Yeah, I wasn't into all that. Um, I mean, I'm really a Batman guy, you know. And I love, I, I really loved the um, Legends of the Dark Knight. I think it was the big uh, compilations that they did. Um, 
and that was really my jam. I loved the JSA secret archives or secret files. Those were really good. That's my co-host's fate. Like, my JSA is his favorite thing. Ah, nice, nice, so, nice. So, our third question. What is something positive that you want to see more of in the comic book world and just the industry in general? People, people realizing their existing history. So, like, Nertino is has been as much a community project as it has been a history project. Like, when people talk about Latin Americans and geek culture, they talk either... Oh, we ourselves do this as well. We're talked about like immigrants. Like, we just showed up and, like, decided we liked X-Men a week ago. Or we liked Superman a month ago. When, I'm sorry, who was one of the, like, one of the uh, artists and writers that received an award for 50 years or... Like what being one of the most significant contributors to DC in 50 years was that George Perez? I'm sorry. Who was illustrating Captain America in the 1940s? Was that Alejandro Stromberg y Rosa? Who was animating the Peanuts at the direct request of Charles Schultz? A Mexican. Yeah. No, but like. There have been Latin Americans that have been involved in pop culture from the beginning, and I think when people talk about diversity in the industry, it's all, well, you know, I really don't want them to make Superman a Latino. It's more like, guys, we built a quarter of this. Actually know your history, know where you've been, and you don't have to feel uncomfortable in this space because you get to tell people cool facts like this. Thank you. Thanks for listening to our Comic-Con annual. Support us at patreon.com slash supersons. Find us at Twitter at DC Supersons. Find us on Instagram at Supersons Pod. And our website is also supersonspod.com. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you guys in two weeks. All right, Mike, you can stop the recording now. Recording stopped. Are you sure you need to do this? More sure than anything. You don't have to be in the war to report on it. Are you going to be safe? Honestly, <laughs> I'm not sure at all, but you know he's got the anti-life equation. Honestly, I don't know if the new gods even stand a chance. I was just thinking that maybe we could, I, I don't know, offer some sort of moral support to their troops? At the end of the day, we're hard-hitting journalists, and this is what we do. Anything for a story. <sighs> Motherbox. Boom tube coordinates. Apocalypse.